Hello, good morning everyone. In your fourth module, you will be learning about the mineralogy, structure, chemistry, optical and physical properties, mode of occurrences and uses of number of groups of mineral that will include olivine, garnet, pyroxene, amphibole, felspars, felspathoids and so on. So before going into that, I must explain what do you mean by mineral chemistry in order to understand that whatever that we will be explaining in the upcoming lectures. So a geologist considers minerals as the basic building blocks comprising nearly the entire crust of the earth. If geologists are to understand the earth, its formation and its dynamics, they must understand minerals. So today we are going to discuss some basics of chemistry related to the topics in mineral chemistry. This will help us to discuss the mineral groups, their mineralogy, structure, chemistry, optical and physical properties in detail. So if you define a mineral, a mineral is a naturally occurring crystalline solid with a definite but not necessarily fixed chemical composition. Mineral must be crystalline solids. The atoms and or ions that comprise crystalline materials are arranged and chemically bonded in a regular and repeating long range pattern. All minerals have a definite chemical composition. A chemical composition may be written for any mineral. For example, is a common mineral quartz which is composed of silicon and oxygen. The ratio of that it is 1 is to 2. So you have 1 silicon and 2 oxygen molecules joined together. The composition of many mineral species may vary within their certain limits. An example is the mineral olivine, which contains iron rich minerals or magnesium rich minerals. For iron rich, we may say that Fe2SiO4 and magnesium rich may be Mg2SiO4. It may be having an intermediate composition because this phosphorite and phyllite, they are uh, two n members of a system. However, the proportions, they always work out so that the ratio of Fe plus Mg is to Si is to O. They always remain 2 is to 1 is to 4. So they always keep this ratio when you write the chemical formula of that mineral. So the nature of chemical elements, think about that. All matter is composed of fundamental building blocks called elements that exist as a discrete atoms and may combine to form molecules, crystals and minerals. The atoms that comprise each of the elements are composed of the fundamental physical building blocks of matter. They are protons, neutrons and electrons. In the Bohr model, electrons are like small spherical particles orbiting around the nucleus. Positively charged protons in the nucleus attract and hold on to the negatively charged electrons. The number of protons is called the atomic number. The outermost electrons in an atom is called the valence electron. The valence electron strongly affect chemical properties. Elements with valence electrons in similarly shaped orbitals are chemically similar. So you will find they are having the similar chemical properties or other physical properties. So atoms are more stable if electrons are completely fill the energy levels and sublevels. For becoming ions and to obtain their stability or obtain this stability, atoms may give up or borrow electrons. So basically ions are atoms that have an excess or deficiency of electrons compared to the number of protons in the nucleus. So there may be cations with a net positive charge as there are more protons than electrons or anions with a net negative charge as there are more electrons than the protons. So cations have net positive charge and anions have net negative charge. The ionic charge or else we also talk, uh, call it as the valence is the number of protons less the number of electrons which means that number of proton minus the number of electrons give you the ionic charge. It is represented by a superscript number after the elemental symbol. 
for example if you see in the case of iron you can write it as fe2 plus or uh, if you say in the case of sodium we call it as na plus or potassium we call it as na so it's all uh, monovalent and this is divalent all ions with plus or minus one charge we call it as monovalent and with plus or minus two then we call it as divalent so if you imagine then if you have a uh, trivalent for example aluminium has a three valency that is three plus so trivalent and if you have tetravalent something like silica has four charges so that is four plus so you can have monovalent divalent trivalent or tetravalent so the process of losing an electron is what we call it as oxidation you will be discussing about this when we talk about oxides or gaining of an electron then what we call it as reduction oxidation leaves metal with a positive charge they may combine with oxygen uh, anions to form oxides so oxygen in ionic state you have valency of minus 2 iron metal for example may oxidize to become fe2 plus or fe3 plus if fe2 plus then we call it as ferrous ion so, and fe3 plus is a ferric ion combined with oxygen it may form so something called fe2 o3 so we call it as hematite uh, there is another mineral called wustite but hematite is more common because under the normal earth surface condition iron easily oxidizes so there are number of attempts have been made to estimate the relative abundance of chemical elements in the crust there are about 89 naturally occurring elements out of that only 8 are present in the substantially high amount so here basically oxygen silica aluminium iron magnesium sodium calcium potassium you can say that these are the elements that are contained in a substantially high amount they come uh, they comprise large majority of the earth crust and forms the composition of most common minerals the composition of bulk earth is difficult to determine as sampling mantle and core is very difficult but then how do you know about the composition of earth you, you cannot sample the entire earth from the core and mantle in that sense but still we have uh, a sufficiently good understanding about what could be the average composition of the bulk of the earth so how do you know that so the first way of doing is that earth mass and density distribution they as they determined by the geophysical means like you know that there are these p waves and s waves the propagation of these waves to the uh, through the interior of the earth they give us the idea about the uh, material property of the inner part of the earth studying the composition of basaltic magmas derived from the mantle and the sample of the mantle that arrive with the magma may be also useful in studying or understanding the internal composition of the earth another way of doing is that comp uh, the, by analyzing the composition of meteorites to represent the material from which the earth accreted so meteorites what we believe is that meteorite may be the elements that would have been formed from a composition before earth started accreting or so before the differentiation happened the meteorite might have come uh, like uh, solidified and a piece of meteorite may give us the composition of the bulk of the earth another way of doing is that applying the cosmological geochemical and petrophysical models to evaluate these data the majority of the earth is composed of about few elements such as oxygen silica aluminium iron calcium potassium sodium and magnesium so these are the major elements that contribute or that constitute the 90 percentage of the earth part so if you think about the minerals by based on their composition 39 percentage of earth crust is made up of plagioclase that is a type of feldspar then you have alkali feldspars that is basically potassium aluminium silicate plagioclase feldspar is basically sodium and calcium aluminium silicate then you have quartz pyroxenes then amphiboles then mica clay and some other silicates this so if you think about the controls of crystal structure how the uh, minerals are bonded or how the mineral uh, why the mineral is having some defined structure and what are the why that mineral having particular physical property they are governed by a uh, number of aspects the first order control on the structure of the mineral 
is the nature of the chemical bonding that holds the elements together. The three major types of bonding as you have already learned in your first module is basically metallic bonding, covalent bonding and ionic bonding. So when you think about the structural controls with ionic bonding, one of the easiest way to understand the structure of many common mineral is based on the assumption that the anions and cations pack together as different sized spheres. So many common minerals in which oxygen is the anion shows dominantly ionic bonding. A good example is basically silicate minerals. So Pauling rule explains quantitatively the requirements for electro electrostatic bonded atomic arrangements with most favorable energy relationships. There are five rules of uh, Pauling. The first point is very important that is basically the coordinational principle or it's also known as first Pauling's rule. Around every cation a coordination polyhedron of anion forms in which cation anion distance is determined by the radius sums and the coordination number by the radius ratio. The coordination principle states that how anions and cations pack together in a crystal structure depends on their relative sizes. The principal variable that influence effective ionic radius include the oxidation state that we have already discussed is the valence of the ion and the number of anions in contact with the cation. The coordination number is the number of anion packed around the cation. The co coordination polyhedra is the shape defined by the anions coordinating with the cation. The common regular coordination polyhedra are of different shapes. The normal, uh, the common ones are the first one is in cubic shape. It could be uh, octahedron, it could be tetrahedron, it could be a triangle or a line. Some cases we also call it as dodecahedron if it is a, a 12 coordination number. They, these have coordination numbers of, for example, if cube have coordination number of 8, octahedron has a coordination number of 6, tetrahedron has a coordination number of 4 respectively. The number of anions with which a cation coordinates is determined by the relative size of the anion and cations. For a given anion size, large cations will be able to coordinate with more anions. That you, as you know that if the cationic size is larger, the number of anions that can fit around the cation so that it would touch on the boundaries would be more. If the small uh, cation size is smaller, the number of co uh, anions that may, uh, that may be surrounding the smaller cation would be less. So a convenient way of expressing the relative size of the cation and anion is the radius ratio. So the radius ratio R R may be written as R radius of cation divided by radius of anion. So this gives relation that indicates or that gives us the idea about the coordination number of that element. So for some examples of the radius ratio I may give. So for example, if the coordination number is 12, it is uh, generally not uh, so regular. They are having uh, cubic or hexagonal close packing. The radius ratio must be 1 for 12. So for, for a coordination number of 12, the R is about 1. If the coordination number is 8 that we have already discussed, it's about the Q having a radius ratio of 0 0.732. If you discuss about the 6 that is uh, basically octahedron, the radius ratio is 414 to 0.732. Tetahedron, it is 0 0.225 to 0 0.414. Or if you may think for triangle, it is something like 0 0.155 to 0 0.0225. And for a line, it is less than 0 0.11. So for a 12 fold coordination, if the anion and cation have about the same size, then you can have a uh, radius ratio of about 1. So I have already discussed, if that is the case, then you have a 12 coordination. Which means that around each cation, there will be 12 anions that can surround in a, in a way that, so that each anion touches the cation. The two different ways in which 12 fold coordination can be achieved are based on the cubic closest packing and 
hexagonal losses packing. When you talk about the eightfold coordination, if the radi radius ratio is less than one, that we have already discussed, if it is between 0 0.732 and 1, then we can have a eightfold coordination. That is what we call it as cubic coordination. The cation is too small to maintain the contact with 12 anions. So that case, you have to reduce the number of anions, anions that come in contact with the cation. With the regular packing, the number of anions that can surround and touch the cation is 8 in case of eightfold coordination. Coordination polyhedra would be in a cubic shape. If you uh, take a six-fold coordination, then if the radius ratio is less than 0 0.732 and the limiting radius, the lower end is 0 0.414, then we can call it as octahedral coordination. What about tetrahedral coordination? It's a four-fold coordination. If the radius ratio smaller than 0 0.414 down to the limit of 0 point up to 0 0.225 then uh, the, the shape of the coordination polyhedra forms a corners of a tetrahedron or rather it's a shape of a tetrahedron and uh, the coordination is known as tetrahedron coordination and the threefold uh, we have already discussed it is between 0 0.0225 and 0 0.155 and that forms a, the anion forms the contact uh, corners of a triangle and that we call it as triangular coordination. All these things that we are talking about is this particular size of an element that determines whether it will be sitting in a given structure of a, or framework structure of a mineral. So some of the cations fit comfortably in more than one coordination. So before that I must say that like uh, for example case of magnesium and iron they have nearly same ionic size so that it can easily substitute for one another but in some cases some of the cation fit comfortably in more than one coordination uh, for example al3 plus they can sit in a four fold and six fold coordination in case of uh, iron and magnesium they have sizes almost appropriate for uh, six and eight fold coordination and sodium and calcium, they are uh, similar size in which they can go into either 8-fold or 12-fold coordinate. So uh, these are some elements under different uh, physical condition, for example, higher pressure or high temperature condition, they sit into a coordination uh, which is either higher or lower than their number indicates. The elements can easily substitute when it forms a composition of a mineral.